Right then, folks, this is the square cube law. So let's uh, go through this a little bit. Then I'll say what the issue is with dinosaurs. When an object undergoes a proportional increase in size, its new volume is proportional to the cube of the multiplier and its new surface area is proportional to the square of the multiplier. Okay, so this is the nub of it in this highlighted area. The point of this law, and this is from TV Tropes, the point of this law is that with living beings, strength is more or less a function of area. The strength of a muscle or bone, and that's important, we'll come, I'll come back to that later, bone, the strength of a muscle or bone is proportional to the area of its cross section, not to its total volume. But weight is a function of volume. And Newton's famous second law, force equals mass times acceleration, means that if you double a critter's height while keeping it the same shape, you end up with four times the muscle power moving eight times the mass. So instead of having the same relative agility as the original, the double-sized creature actually has only half. The same goes for most machinery. This applies to flyers as well. Double the size and you get four times the wing power, attempting to keep eight times the weight airborne. So the creature's ability to fly has actually been cut by half. Now with aircraft, it's a bit different because it means that you can carry more fuel, but then that in itself is not efficient because you're lugging around the weight of the fuel so it depends on the uh, on the mission so let's go through my slides but also my notes so um, this is some empirical evidence these are the um, the weightlifting records by uh, body mass and I wish it would start at sort of zero and uh, sort of like get a sort of a fairer graph. So we've got the uh, men and women. Now there's a a simplified version of this on David Asker's website, and this is the only graphic I've taken from his website where he goes into this in a lot of depth. He is a, a physicist, so you can see here that. Someone who is twice the mass is not twice as strong. That's because the cross-sectional area of the muscle is not twice. The weight is uh, uh, twice. Um, so yeah, the weight is going up a lot more than the cross-sectional area of the muscle or the bone. And I will get on to that. Um, so... I have some notes I'm looking on the screen here. So I've heard on one video about the bone answer, where they said that, oh, dinosaurs had um, air in their bones, so their bones were lighter. Here's the problem with that. The bone bones are not a significant percentage of someone's overall mass. So having really light bones doesn't change it that much. So, for example, I can give you some data. So this is refuting the bone answer. Bone mass is only 14% of the average human and 16.5% of a 5.5 ton elephant. So it looks like the bigger the creature you are, you need more bone because uh, you're supporting more weight. So the idea that the dinosaur had lighter bones doesn't solve the problem. An elephant's body fat, and if you think about body fat, an elephant's body fat is 8.5% in males and 10% in females. Muscle mass, not muscle mass, the uh, uh, fat percentage, not muscle mass, because, because the muscle mass in females is not 40% and 20% in males, but the fat percentage of the average Merkin man, 28%, and the average Merkin woman, 40%. Now, elephants find it really hard to stand up. And so they usually sleep stood up. Now, an elephant finds it really hard to get up and its body fat is 8.5%. So 
do you think you could get up with a body fat percentage of 28 percent when it's really hard to get up anyway so and then we can sort of look a bit more on elephants ignoring its legs an african elephant can lift 1300 pounds but that is only about 10 percent of its mass strong absolute strength weak relative strength and you can see that from this graphic the relative strength is decreasing uh so now this is about for i did biology at university in england um so that meant that i only did biology it wasn't a major it was purely biology so if we look at the proportions of these animals we can see that there's a lot of strong legs here on these larger animals but look at this dinosaur here where you've got the legs are not much bigger or roughly the same size as the elephant and it's carrying around all the weight of the neck and the tail so not only have you got a larger scale problem you've got the square cube law problem of being a larger scale you've also carried in carrying around additional weights so it's almost as if it should be in reverse where this should be much much smaller and then you can say oh oh because it can afford to carry around that long neck and that long tail because that's all supported by the weight of the legs and so it's like hmm this seems to be a problem uh, especially when the bones have to support all that weight but there is a solution so for example look at this Parasotherium. that's how i'm pronouncing it so this was bigger than an elephant look at the muscles on the legs and we'll see. now look at the size of the neck and compare the size of the neck to the supersaurus here the weight of that and then so the legs are actually bigger here than there i assume in this is to scale that this is the whole point of this graphic but seeing as this video got it wrong about why they were so big um then i'm not i'm not trusting them on this scale uh and this guy's supposed to be two meters tall by the way there was not there was a new zealand cricketer um his name was peter and he was two meters tall and his nickname was two meter peter but again look at the legs the legs are smaller so how does the legs support a much bigger creature than here when the legs are smaller so this is outlining the problem i'll get to the solution and again here you've got an elephants not looking around a great big yes it's got the the head but you've got the weight of the not only have you got the weight of the neck you've also got the leverage i mean how it's like if you lift a weight with your hand out even if it's just say if you're holding it right say a chicken fly i call it a chicken fly the, the the leverage of that you know give me a leg of a long enough i can move the world so the amount of leverage the amount of muscle needed just to keep the neck going and there's also problems with blood pressure and the amount of pressure needed to pump um this is why water lifts can only go so high uh, to pump the uh, blood up to the head um and again here proportions these proportions are ridiculous if the conditions were the same again here not lugging around a huge tail and so a much larger proportion of the elephant is muscle mass going towards the legs and here again the the weight of the neck and the weight of the tail through these legs how can it support all of that weight and again it would have a problem even if it was just scaled bigger because of the square cube law but i'm also coming here from the point of view of proportions so the square cube law is that um the mass has increased say uh a lot but uh, is, is in as increased by the cube but the square area of the transverse cross section of the muscle and the strength of the bones has only doubled because area is squared and volume and volume is and mass is related to volume and that has gone up by the cube so and again here um and this is about what fossils actually are like what they actually found is that it isn't the actual bones 
So, um, over millions of years, water in nearby rocks surrounds these hard parts. The minerals in the water replace them bits by bit. When minerals have completely replaced the organic tissue, what's left is a solid rock, solid rock copy of the original specimen. Right, and then some more facts on elephants. Uh, I'm trying to do my best to get accurate uh, information about elephant strength. Uh, it's a little bit different from the other one. Uh, they're known to be some of the strongest animals, and usually seen uprooting trees, tearing apart vegetation, manipulating objects, and even lifting weights. <laughs> when using their trunks, elephants can exert a force up to 300 kilograms. So it doesn't matter that they've not got a lot of relative strength. They are strong enough. Strong enough. Um, strong enough to do what they need to do. Here. So I put these two, I don't own any of these graphics, but I put these two together. And my point here is to remember that the strength of bones is proportional to how, to the sort of the, uh, the cross-sectional area and that sort of like, if you're going across like that, that is a transverse cross-section. And, um, and so look at the strength of the bone. And then this is much, much bigger. So in present conditions, this dinosaur would not be able to live in present conditions. There would be too much weight. And you've got all of the weight of the tail. There's no huge tail on the elephant, just this little one here. And you've got just the head there. But you've got all of this weight added to it. And you've got the volume going up by cubed. Um, and you've got a a bones that about the same size supporting much much more weight so the, it looks like the bones haven't even gone up by um uh although uh, I mean, the exact scale of it, this is probably i just did this to show it better so it's not actually to scale so the elephant might actually be to about there but the point is carrying a lot more weight not just with the scale in other words if this was the same height as an elephant now it would have much much more problems because it's carrying the weight of the neck and the tail but that said it's also um three or four times bigger okay so cube that but then you can only double the um you can only square uh, the bones if it's to scale so there's a big problem there and it will be even more problems i'll go through so um with the flyers let me see if i've uh lifted some some of the notes i have here yeah so again relative strength versus absolute strength think of little kids scorning little things that can go on the monkey bars and carry their own weight with their arms lift themselves across also think about the relative strength of the dung beetle what it can move in terms of its own mass um yeah hard to stand up strength of bones yes fractures in large animals large animals can't jump around like cats like domestic cats right yeah and then so there's a lot of evidence which points to a limit as to how big land animals can get so an elephant is about as, as big as you can get on land uh and then I've compared the relative muscle mass of the elephant to the largest dinosaur. Why less relative muscle mass on a bigger creature? Shouldn't it have more relative muscle mass? And again, the little kids, they can, uh, very strong, relative strength. And then about giraffes. Giraffes have heart attacks because of the blood pressure. They don't live much past 20 years. Now, Quetzalcoatlus. Now, this is about flight and size. A swan can't hover. A hummingbird can hover, but a swan is very difficult for a swan to get airborne. Um, and then uh, what David Asker did on his website, you want to go to it, is he goes through the flight equations. And he basically said that Quetzalcoatlus could not fly. And the only way to sort of make it work is by paleontologists saying something like, Oh, it weighed 80 kilograms. Really? 
something this much bigger than a human only weighed 80 kilograms because they're thinking would it flow it must have been light because it flew but they're missing out something else david asker comes up with the answer should maybe call him david answer right uh he could change his name by depot uh quetzal Cosulus. and then some more problems so the paleobiology of so this is about argentivis this huge again the mass is going up a lot more than the wing area so they're thinking here however skeletal evidence suggests that its breast muscles were not powerful enough for wing flapping for extended periods so argentivis is having a problem so argentivis is having a problem at this size and quetzalcoatlus is a much bigger and also there's a lot of dead weight here that's not providing lift whereas if you look at this there's a much larger proportion that is generating lift in argentivis compared to quetzalcoatlus in fact if you were to look at the wing area the wing area of Argentivis would not be much smaller than in Quetzalcoatlus. Again, look at all this area that's not lifting, not a lifting uh, body. And you got, and how much these legs here, how use, uh, what's the utility of these in flight? Whereas this bird has not got these heavy legs lugging around. So there's different conditions. And I'll get to the insects in a moment about um, oxygen in the air because they could say oh the oxygen was about 50 percent more yeah well they ain't 50 percent bigger a 50 percent increase in oxygen now i don't know the equations for diffusion but a 50 percent increase in the amount of oxygen in the air does not suddenly mean that diffusion is going to work better because insects do not have proper lungs they don't have hemoglobin they just they just relies on diffusion of the gases into and outside of the insect and it dissolving in a kind of uh, bodily fluid um so again look at this proportions the proportions are working against it if some of this bag is going to fly in a lot more wing area and again this dead weight uh nature of flight yeah poorly understood so there's like yes damn right it's poorly understood but david asker worked it out the model was based on the then current weight estimate so people think that that huge thing was 80 kilograms 80 kilograms i mean this human man probably 80 kilograms it's probably what about six foot tall that would be what about six foot six two meters that's supposed to be 80 kilograms so let's uh, get to the right point got some mass flight equations and then i'll get to the solution um again so it's like and then if it is 200 kilograms when it, well, it's got a bit of a problem the method of flight in these toasts depends largely on their weight which has been controversial and widely differing masses have been favored by different scientists so this is how the scientists are thinking they're thinking well it flew uh therefore it has to have been really light but it's not plausible that it was that light so how did they fly well there is a solution that in the flight equations again here this is supposed to be 80 kilograms right and again you've got a lot of dead weight in the neck and head i mean look at the size of the neck and then compared to the arm right again i don't own these pictures again like really that big i mean it's not like they could put like a wing at the front to get some lift up from the head right so right dragonflies right it can lift twice their body weight an elephant can't lift twice his body weight that's because of the square cube law all right so the relative strength 
And, and then that insect is a lot bigger than present day insects. So, so like I said, oh, they could say, oh, the oxygen is 50% more. It's not 50% bigger. It's like much, much bigger. So, but how does the diffusion work? So this is what I'm getting to. I'm getting towards the atmosphere and this is part of the solution. Right there. Right. And they can carry quite a lot of weight for their little size. They yeah, more than dragonflies. Yeah, adult insect. The highest confirmed weight for an adult insect is uh, that. And you can see. Right, because they are limited because of diffusion. So. Right, here we go. Right, 71. L list of largest insects. So, here. No lungs. The surface area of the lungs is huge. If you were to spread it all out with all of the alveoli, the surface area would be the size, I think I, I think I would call it, would be like a tennis court if it was all spread out. And we're sucking in air and it's all going within that, within, and then there's hemoglobin as well. All these alveoli and it's like, but with this, there's no sucking in. It's just relying on diffusion. A little bit of diffusion coming in these tiny holes and then dissolving in the fluids and then going out. And this is why insects, as they run around, they get knackered and then they stop because of the rest because they have to wait for the diffusion to occur. So they're much limited by size because of respiration. Because again, with the, with the square cube law in terms of respiration, the surface area for the openings and all of that, it would be much less and it would have to sort of... Um, respirate and provide oxygen for um the much greater volume so they are limited in size now this is the ideas for oxygen but again this doesn't quite cut it because this small increase in oxygen is not suddenly going to be enable giant insects um it's not going to help because like I said, the, the, the insects that magenta was like this big, about um what about about a foot across? Much, much bigger. So there's the percent now I need someone in physics to help me with, or advanced chemistry to help me with this. And that is what is the effect of the an increase of pressure on diffusion? That is part of the answer. Let's get uh onto this right it said it used to be linked to hyperoxic conditions it's not the concentration it's not the concentration well it is the concept but it, it's to do i think it's, the solution is air pressure the atmosphere was a lot different when dinosaurs were around and that is what we're getting towards and then again larry keely's channel for that and again, when the dinosaur, when the insects were around, because I know it wasn't in exactly the same. But the point is that this proves that at least in this era, atmospheric conditions must have been different because of the diffusion problem. You can't have a, you can't have diffusion in a giant insect. Now you can have large arthropods in the sea, but again, they're not relying on this more got gills and that sort of gills but it's more possible to have a giant arthropod in the sea um right right and again proportions proportions huge neck tail being supported by these legs right so david asker's solution is related to this idea the concept of buoyancy. The buoyancy in general, whether in air or in water, is an easy way to mimetize limits. So for instance, think of airships. In fact, with an airship, if you just have it, say, 10% uh, wider and 10% longer, you get a lot more buoyancy. So it's actually working in your favor there. And it goes over that in the TV Tropes article. Because buoyancy is dependent on density, not mass. Good news for whales. 
So, again, proportions. Largest creature that's ever lived, whale. Doesn't have to support its own weight. It's got the water to do it. And again, size of the legs compared to all this weight and relatively the elephant. And again, an elephant's only got, what is it in female elephants, 10% fat? So, but a whale can have a huge percentage of fat. Now, one of the benefits in water is that it can retain heat more. Uh, and now, oh yes, and that is why elephants don't have hair. Because they're so big that they can retain the heat. Right. So. Again, thinking about the bones supporting all of this weight. Just holding that tail. Uh, again, think of leverage. The amount of muscular exertion to to hold that up and with the neck. I mean, imagine going around holding your arm out like that. How tiring that is on the shoulder if you just held that out. Can you hold your arm out for five minutes? All right. So, uh... Again, it's not just sacks. Having a sack there is not going to um, make the rest of it that much lighter. Because, um, right, I mean, these are not bouncy castle kind of dinosaurs. You can't just say, oh, they're really light. So now I'm going to get towards the solution. So uh, the solution on uh, David Asker's website is... And he, and he said it worked for the flight equations of Quetzalcoatlus. And I'll go and put that graphic on for Quetzalcoatlus. The solution is that if the atmosphere... So I did buoyancy show the whale. Buoyancy is about density, not mass. Air pockets in dinosaur bones likely helped with buoyancy. Maybe, maybe not. But again, it's not that much. However, David Asker has reasoned reasoning for why dinosaurs and i quote would very likely have a body density similar to present day non-bird vertebrates so it's not about them being relatively light so the so the so again with the giant insects i would say that that is a bit of evidence that the air was a lot thicker therefore you get in a higher not just a relative amount of oxygen in the air, but David Asker worked out that it's about 90 times. So if you've got, I think it was about 90 times, basically it was the amount of air, a pressure of air needed that it would be about half as thick as water. And that buoyancy provided would enable a creature like this to be this side, this size to evade the square cube law, evade the law. And not only that, is to have these lug around the extra weight of the neck and the tail. Is the buoyancy of a much, much thicker atmosphere. So it would be, and it works out, it would be that, and if that atmosphere is about half as thick as water, that would enable Quetzalcoatlus to fly. Then the flight equations would work. Given its how much power could be generated by the muscle mass that it had based on the uh the wing area and based on the likely mass of it the only way it could have worked is if the air was thick enough certain aircraft have an absolute so the f-35 fighter can only go so high it's got a low absolute seal because it's harder to get lift the higher you go up um yeah thicker air allows flights yeah, yeah, and the lungs get around the surface air problem for humans. I've sort of shown that. So that is the answer. The answer is because we know, because how else could giant insects exist? With How else does the respiration work based on diffusion? To have an insect, say, a hundred times bigger. And yet say, oh, that's ex that's not that can't be explained by 50% more oxygen in the atmosphere. But that could be explained by a much, much, much denser atmosphere. And then therefore, much, much denser amount of oxygen. So 
Yeah, there we go. Just about 30 minutes on there. And again, look at the amount of bones, look at the amount of strength there. Yeah, like to support all of this. And like I said, this, this struggles to stand up. Elephant struggles to stand up. Only have female elephant, only 10% body fat. Right, so the that shows the square cube law. Right then. End broadcast.